This is the Dean, the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you. And we're continuing this week on the Dean Show with Abdullah Habkim Quick, his story on how he came to Islam, former Christian who investigated all the different world religions and he came, came to know that this way of life was indeed not a system organized by man, but organized by the one God, the God of Jesus, Abraham, Moses, and the last and final messenger sent to mankind of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And he's here again to share his experiences and his story here on the Dean Show. Don't go nowhere. This is the Dean, the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean, this is the Dean Show. This is the Dean, this is the Dean Show. This is the Dean, this is the Dean Show. 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 Peace be with you. Isn't this a greeting of all the messengers? That's right. All the messengers. They didn't Peace. Just W w they didn't just greet each other like, hey, what's up, how you doing? Mm -hmm. They did this greeting that us Muslims are doing, isn't it? That's right. Yeah, they, st they started their affairs in peace. In peace. Mm -hmm. We're people of peace. That's we right. We don't want war. But it seems like there's a lot of misconceptions. We're going we're gonna to maybe pick your brain on that too, but can you please, people can go to thedeanshow.com for those that missed last week's show. They can go there to view it. Now, can you kind of bring people up to speed and kind of summarize where we left off and to where we are starting today. Mm -hmm. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Um, I was raised in the United States, in Boston, uh, and you know, uh, to a very religious family, hard-working family. And so I had good values from the beginning, and I was fortunate to be in the company of students from major universities. Mm -hmm. Although we lived in a housing project, uh, we were in between two major universities. So I had access to information. So I was learning street life and how to be tough and rough, but at the same time, I was learning information about the world. So that really was an opening for me, and um, that, that enabled me to question uh, some of the, the, the wrong practices within, you know, that I found within the church, uh, to leave the church and to begin to look at world religions. Um, I went to university in Pennsylvania and, and Oregon. Um, I was upset you know, with this, the system. It was the 60s. And we were questioning everything around us. So I left the university and I was drafted. Um, and in order to avoid this confusion, I became a war resistor and I migrated to Canada. And it was in Toronto, Canada, uh, all praises due to Allah, that I accepted Islam um, at the hands of a great scholar, Dr. Ahmed Saka. So with that, you know, my answer was, 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 com was completed now. I found a way of life that gave me a worldview it gave me a lifestyle, how to raise my family, how to uh, deal with my children. It gave me a dietary plan. It, it connected me with people of other races, other nationalities. Uh, and so there I was now in Canada, you know, looking at the world all set and waiting for an opening. And, you know, uh, by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, creator of the heavens and the earth, the Saudi Arabian government offered two scholarships to Canada, to the Canadian Muslim Canada, uh, uh, community in 1973. So I was one of the two uh, who, who was given the scholarship and I went to Medina. Yes. So as a young man with my wife who I had married, uh, she was a Muslim too, and we went to Medina in 1973. Now this was when Medina was in the old uh, form. Didn't have no tar roads. Um, we lived in a simple house with no running water. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife was originally from Jamaica. Yeah. Uh, but raised in Canada, so she knew how to live a rough life. So we lived uh, with the Bedouins, and we learned classical Arabic, and it was, Medina was beautiful, and you know, it was the old Medina, before the hustle and bustle now that you find you know, with the skyscrapers. Yes. And uh, so in that atmosphere, 
we took in you know the knowledge of Islam and alhamdulillah um, it was a great struggle but uh, I was the first American uh, to graduate from any university in Saudi Arabia. First American? The first American. MashaAllah, now the first American to graduate from that prestigious university here yeah. on the Dean Show. Yeah. MashaAllah. So, so that was a great achievement, um, you know, for me. And um, from there, you know, I became very close to a very famous Sheikh, uh, Sheikh Abdulaziz bin Bas, mm -hmm. Rahimahullah. And he was a very kind person. He had memorized the whole of Bukhari, Hadiths, sayings of the Prophet, peace mm -hmm. be upon him. He was very kind and he wanted to know about Islam in America. Mm -hmm. So when I graduated, he said, I want to meet this person, you know, I want to talk to him. Yeah. So I sat with him and, you know, he befriended me. Um, and so he said, I want you to research America. So he gave me an open ticket to, to, to research Muslims in the Americas. It was a ticket like this size. And so I traveled literally throughout the Caribbean I, I traveled to Belize, Honduras, um, Costa Rica, wow. Panama, Hello. Aruba, Guyana, Trinidad, Jamaica, Bermuda, uh, you know, Bahamas, all throughout the region investigating Muslim communities mm -hmm. um, to give an idea, a report about what is the state of Islam uh, in, the, in this region. And um, from there I went to California and taught for a year and then I returned back to Toronto. Uh, and then I went into the Caribbean, and I lived in Jamaica for four years. So I taught uh, in Jamaica and moved around the islands and spent some beautiful years, you know, in the Caribbean region. Uh, returned to Toronto, where I was the imam of the big mosque, uh, the Jami Mosque, from 1985 to 1990. Um, and it is there I, my, my research blossomed, because not only was I the imam of the mosque, I enrolled in the university at the same time, and I got a master's from the University of Toronto in history department, and then I got a PhD from the University of Toronto. And that was based on the research I did in northern Nigeria. So now I'm traveling. The Muslims in Nigeria invite me to a big conference, Islam in Africa, because they wanted to know about the roots of Muslims in the Americas. And they heard about my research and writing, so they invited me there. And um, so from there, I met the scholars of West Africa um, and, you know, I brought back documents of a, of a famous sheikh, Uthman Danfodio, uh, a great scholar in the 19th, uh, 18th century uh, there and I, I, I had 37 original documents in Arabic language. So I translated these documents, commented on them, got a PhD and then I began to travel around the world. Uh, and so I was, I, I, I was invited to China, Malaysia to um, Europe, to South America, to Brazil, um, to many parts of the world to deliver lectures about Islam in America uh, and you know, youth type of lectures and because the globalization was happening. So people in, in the third world, in the Muslim world, they want to know how do we deal with our youth uh, in this new American um, onslaught, this globalization. You know, McDonald's is everywhere. Kentucky yeah. Fried Chicken is everywhere. How do we handle this? So now, you know, just by the will of Allah, I happen to be in the right place at the right time. Uh -huh. You know, I, I'm an American, and I'm, and I'm, you know, qualified in Islamic studies. Um, I'm working with the youth, you know, so I can provide answers to them uh, on the ground, how to deal with some of your problems, your family problems, your youth problems. And so people invited me. And so this is what uh, enabled me to travel, you know, so, so far because it's not easy to travel uh, in the world, you know, with the prices of plane tickets and whatnot. Yeah. So Alhamdulillah, I, I was able to visit 58 countries, yeah. um, you know, interacting with Muslims, you know, at the same time researching. In any country I go into, I research, I, I find the roots of the people, you know, I, I ask them their questions, I record this information, right? I document the information, you know, and then I, I, I put it in categories and then I, I, I get my, my worldview expands. You know, so, so this enabled me, you know, to, to, to reach new heights in terms of understanding Islam, not only in America, but Islam in the world. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back with more, God willing, on the Dean Show. Go down and take the books. Put the books in front of you and read them. Read the Quran. Don't be afraid. 
The question is about whether Muslims are or not good citizens. The Constitution defines what a good citizen is. And the preamble says, we the people of the United States in order to form a more perfect union, to establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility. To any Muslim that can say that is a good Muslim. And most Muslims can say that. Most Muslims will embrace that. Most Muslims are good Americans. We're back with Dr. Abdullah Hakim Quick. Sheikh, thank you again for being with us. I'm very back. exciting. Now tell us, before we go on, just a side note, for the not yet Muslims out there, they're hearing Islam, how do you connect all of this? The prophets, and then you got what is with, in their very nature. We say, worship the one God, and this is what, from the beginning of your story, you didn't want to worship the creation. You didn't want to worship a man. You want to worship the creator of all that exists. Mm -hmm. But then they hear this word Islam. Yeah. They agree with that. Say, yeah, I want to worship God. Mm -hmm. Just God. That's it. Not his creation. But how did Islam, they hear this Arabic term, and they think, well, this is an Arab thing. Mm. How do you respond to this? Well, what is important for us to understand is that when we talk about Islam, we are talking about the root religion of all of the prophets. And the Quran itself tells us in the chapter of the B um, that um, prophets and messengers have been sent to all nations and all tribes that they should worship one God and stay away from false deities. So prophets came to China, to India, to Europe, to the Americas. Every nation had a person who taught them believe in one God and do not worship the sun or idols or worship yourself, but go beyond that and connect to the universe. And so that really, you know, is what Islam is. And when I researched in the Arabic language, you know, into the, the, the sayings of the scholars, I found out that, that it is a majority position amongst the scholars that if a person has never heard anything about Islam or Christianity or Judaism, no Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, nobody, and that person believes in one God and lives a good life, then that person is under the mercy of Allah. He can be punished or he can be forgiven. And basically that person is Muslim because every human being is, is born in the natural state of worshiping the Creator. So th there are certain tribes now in the Amazon uh, Valley, uh, or Amazon River, they have met nobody. They don't know any prophets. They don't know any organized form of religion. And these people, as far as we are concerned, are Muslims until they are proven the opposite. Because they worship the Great Spirit. And this is found within their languages. I found the same thing on the African continent. Every African language um, has a concept of God. I went into the British Isles, I went high up into Scotland, and, and I found out that after the time of Jesus, peace be upon him, that there was a, a, a person who came in the area who taught the, the people the belief in one God. The pure monotheism. Pure monotheism. How about Holy, uh, Holy Spirit, Father, Son, Holy Ghost? This is before that. That was the organized Roman Church. Yeah, this had nothing to do with no. the teachings of the prophets? So if you look around in Europe itself, you will find... Uh, pure monotheistic teachings. Just one God. Unitarians in the original sense. Nothing to do with any mixing God into, you know, these, these are three in one, none of these things. No, these are the original Unitarians in Europe itself. It was the organized Roman Church, the Trinitarians, you know, who, who, who forced, you know, this, what we would consider to be a pagan belief mm -hmm. of the many gods from Greece and Rome basis. You know, they forced that on, you know, the, 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 the native people in Europe itself, as well as other parts of the world. And so it's interesting for me, in Chinese, the Chinese say Shang-Ti. Shang-Ti. And Shang-Ti is the one God. One God. That's the creator of the you heavens You stop and the earth. there. You don't add anything after, just one. Right. So that's, that's the, the, the cosmic spirit. Can you see him? You go into church and you see a no. black God, that Jesus is black with blue eyes over here. He's Jesus, you know, brown. No, over here is white. Like that. No image to God? No. No area code, zip code, no DNA? That's right. None of that? And the same thing in Africa, I found there's a nation called the Bantus. Mm -hmm. And the Bantu is from the word Entu. And Entu is the cosmic spirit. That's the creator. Mm -hmm. So the Bantu are the children of God, the mm -hmm. children of the cosmic spirit you know, of the creator of the heavens and the earth. And so you'll find in every African language a way to express one God. Mm -hmm. You'll find even in, in the ancient Vedas of, 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 of India, the original Sanskrit writings, you were not supposed to worship idols. Yeah. You will look at Buddha himself. He left the idols. He was looking for the one God. Yeah. So if you go behind 
the What's, great religions of the world. What was his name? His name was right. Buddha. Buddha. Yeah. Okay, and he was going out he, looking he, for the... He was a prince, and yeah. he, a Hindu prince. And, and he didn't want to worship idols anymore. He was tired of living this life. So he left his riches. He left idol worship in search of the great spirit. Yeah. Unfortunately, now he's, his image is the biggest idol in the world. People are like but worshiping him, giving him divine rights. Yeah, but, but that's people. That's not Buddha himself. Same thing with, can you connect it with Jesus? Did the Jesus same ever thing. call people to worship himself? Never. And it is recorded that, that Jesus, peace be upon him, was a very humble person, you know, who walked most of the time without shoes on, very simple and, and very loving. And he followed the law of Moses completely. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and that has nothing to do with any Trinity concept or other gods, but it is, a, it is a pure belief in Yahweh, in the creator of the heavens and the earth. And that was his belief. And so you find this in the root religions, uh, in, the, in the indigenous people of all nations, including Europe, you will find this Tawheed, and that is the unity. And so this is what I have found over the years, traveling to different parts of, of the world. Studying history. <coughs> studying history, studying culture, studying people that really behind the, the, the so-called differences within people. You know, there is a human spirit, there is a soul. There is a connection with the Creator, which is common amongst all people. Now tell us, someone might fall out their seat right now, and this is something that might come as a shock, but is this what I'm saying the truth? A, we love Jesus, peace be upon him, and Jesus was a Muslim. Is this true? That's right, because I mean, what I found um, from after I left the church, is that when I entered into Islam, it really gave me the true story of Jesus, the true story of Mary. And so my love for Jesus increased. My love for Mary increased, peace be upon them. But I now was, was connected to, to the actual story in the way it happened, because Jesus never w wanted people to worship him. He always pointed to the Father, meaning the creator of the heavens and the earth. And so we understand what the word father means in Semitic languages. It's not your physical father. No. We're all children of God, so it is the creator of the heavens and the earth. This is like metaphorical then. Exactly. So this is really what he was pointing to. Now, uh, you, know, you know, speaking Arabic, which is the sister language of, of Hebrew, you say Shalom Aleichem, and we say Assalamu Alaikum. Same thing. So it's the sister languages. Yeah. Now, I was in touch with Revelation. Yeah. And so I could go straight to the book. I could listen you know, to the words of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu in the original language itself. I lived in the city, so now I realize this is not a, a ritualistic religion. This is not Arabs and non-Arabs. This is the religion of all people. Mm -hmm. This is all racists. So he was, by definition, a Muslim. Because what is a Muslim other than what you're describing? One who is just connecting with the one God. Exactly. So this is the root definition now, that one who submits to do the will of Allah or God, this is a Muslim. So that's what Moses did. Abraham, Noah, Jesus Christ, peace be upon them all. They did that, so they were Muslim. That's right. Amazing. And we also found out that there are people like in ancient Egypt, Akhnaten, whose wife was Nefertiti. Many, many people know Nefertiti. That Akhnaten, you know, challenged to the gods of Egypt. And, and in some reports, he was not worshiping the sun god. He wanted to worship the power behind the sun. And he challenged Egypt just before the time of Moses. And so you will find that there are this, 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 you know, these teachings amongst the Cherokee nation, Sequoia. Uh -huh. There's a famous teacher in, amongst the Cherokee. He was the first person amongst the Cherokee nation in America to, to institute an alphabet. He created the alphabet of the Cherokee. If you look at a picture of Sequoia, he's got a turban on like mine, and he's got a thobe. Uh -huh. And you read the Cherokee writings, and you will find a strong belief in one God, that they are looking to the east, you know, and that they are believers. The Seminole Nation uh, in Florida, you will find Seminoles was a mixture of, of, of many people who fled from the Spanish, uh, uh, you know, settlers, you know, and the, the, the natives. They ran together and they formed this nation. If you look at pictures of the Seminoles, they have turbans on like Mayan and they have thobes. And some of them have even names with Arabic in it. So, so really Islam was here in America as well, not only from the root religion, of the First Nation indigenous people, but Muslims who had come across as well. Here in America. Here in America. And that's a, that's a research that I did in my book called Deeper Roots, 
you know, where we, we, we found presence. Deeper Roots is the book you wrote on this. Right, Deeper Roots to show presence of Muslims in America before Columbus. Before Columbus. That's right. You got proof for this. Proof of it. SubhanAllah. And then how they actually mixed with the, 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 the native people uh, in the Americas long before the 13 colonies were developed. Muslims in America, Islam in America, way before Christopher Columbus. That's right. And you're hearing it here on the Dean Show. We'll be right back. Emphasizing and ascertaining the oneness of God. Recognizing that there is a creator there and that creator has given us the blueprint that you have spoken about. Don't take anything for granted. Don't just follow anything blindly. Anything you believe, research it. And really understand what it is you're believing and question things and question them and search truthfully and honestly. Back here with Dr. Abdullah Hakim Quick here on The Dean Show talking about how he came to Islam and his wonderful experiences from going to being a Christian, a young man who was inspiring to learn the truth and then coming to the truth and that now inspiring to great heights. You're an Islamic scholar, a historian, one who's really embedded, engrossed in seeking knowledge. Tell us now, someone comes and says, you know what? Okay, yeah, I believe in God. God in you, God in me. God's everywhere. It's all good. We're all gods. How would you, just a side note, how would you tackle this question? And have you come across this? Yes, I mean, one time I was, you know, having an interaction with people, you know, about Islam, and a, and a tough guy come to me and he said, I'm God. <laughs> and, he, and he went right up in my face. <laughs> okay, now, I have a background from the streets, right? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I'm a nice Muslim preacher. So he come up to me and he said, I'm God. I said, okay, God, <laughs> put your hand in front of your face. Uh -huh. So he put his hand in front of his you face. You could do this at home right now. Right? Put your hand, and I put my fingers in back of his hand. Yeah. And I said, count how many fingers I have. Of course, he couldn't see it. Just like so that? I said, okay, you're God, man, and you can't see right there? Uh-huh. What kind of God are you? Yeah. So he just put his head down and walked away. Uh-huh. Because what, what I was trying to show him is that when you say God, you are talking about one who is divine in all qualities. You're talking about the one who sees all things and knows all things and hears all things and, you know, above seven heavens. It's not me and you. We're earthly people. We have problems, man. And obviously, you can't, if you're not seeing all things. You can't see. That's right. He can't even see in front of his face. <laughs> yeah. So what kind of a God is he, right? Yeah. You know, so, I mean, that's how you have to deal with some people. Silly stuff. You know, and, 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 and people have to, you know, realize that, that revelation, that prophecy, you know, that God, this is a very serious thing because we're connected to the hereafter. Yeah. We're not only in this world, we're on a journey and shortly we'll be leaving this world. So what will be the condition of our soul? Where will we go? So we, we need to really, you know, uh, search this and, and really, you know, you know, come to grips with, with our frail existence and prepare ourselves for the next life. Definitely, definitely. And this is what all the messengers of God taught, didn't they? That's right. So tell us now a few more points. We want to get them in. Another person is loving what you have to say, but you're like, you know what, I'm just, I believe in God, but I'll do my own thing. I don't want to really follow an organized religion. I do believe in the one God, but mm -hmm. I just, I'm comfortable doing my own thing. What do you guys say? Well, you know, it's the same as a person who's a pretty good mechanic, you know, and then we bring him a new Lamborghini. And, and, and this Lamborghini needs to be put together. So he's a mechanic. He has a pretty good idea of cars. Mm -hmm. So he'll try to put it together and he'll stay and well, this is a new vehicle. But now I can bring you the instruction manual for the Lamborghini, you know, made by the company who developed the car. Mm -hmm. Okay, so similarly with the human being, revelation, you know, it, it's, it's not saying we don't have intelligence, but this is the creator of the human being who knows better why we are created, how we are created. So he's giving us a lifestyle in order, like a manual, in order that we can, you know, run our machine in the proper way. So in the same way that that mechanic who uses, you know, the, 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 the manual for the Lamborghini, he will be successful. He will have his car running where the other guy, you know, he might do okay, but he'll never reach the speed. Mm -hmm. He'll never make the ultimate success of the one who follows the manual. So we say the final testament and the final manual, that is the Qur'an. And we should be reading this Qur'an, every human being, you should know what it is, you should read it, and you should investigate the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, his lifestyle, his teachings, because this is the way that we will be led from this confusion of the world we are living in into the openness 
and purity of the hereafter. Tell us, Sheikh, uh, just a couple more points. Tell us now so many wonderful things when people are sincere, humble-hearted, open-minded. They look and they see, you know, Islam is a way of life of peace. Peace with the Creator, peace with yourself, and then peace with the rest of society. But now, okay, they want to go with what's in their very nature, to worship the one God mm -hmm. and do all the good things as He's told us to do. But they always hear from the media Islam being associated with terrorism, things blowing up, and now they're a little timid, they're a little nervous, they're sincere, but they're like, yeah. I don't, I don't want to be called a terrorist. What do you got to say? Well, what is important to understand is that um, we need to look beyond terminologies. Because if you look at the, the, the American colonies, if you look at America when it was first founded, the people who, who, who declared independence, when the Constitution was first developed, they were called terrorists. And, and, and the British were intent upon destroying you know, the, the leadership of America and ruining this, in this country. But even though they were called terrorists, they continued on because of the principles that they were founding. So similarly, you know, with uh, Muslims, yes, we do have extremists in the Muslim world, like any other nation. There are extremists amongst Christians, Jews, communists, atheists. Every grouping has extremists. But, but the faith itself, you, you, you look at the principles, you know, and, and, and that's really, you know, where we stand on. And, you know, my experience was not originally, it's not a political one. It first benefits me as a person. So look at Islam for yourself, your connection with the Creator, your family, your diet, the way that you function in this world, your, your worldview. And then you can start to expand, you know, to the other areas. And when we get into the, you know, the realm of the world, we will see that it's not politics in the world, it's poly tricks. Mm -hmm. That really there's a lot of tricking going on and confusion yeah. in the world. And, and sometimes we have to sort of get away from that and go back to basics. Yes. You know, to the bas basics of ourselves as human beings, you know, and our, and our connection with God because we are shortly leaving this world. And, and that really is what Islam, you know, can give, you know, to the individual. And we can only pray that the world will find some way to, to develop peace that all nations can live together and people can find a way of using the technology not to destroy but to save the planet. One more on this, one more on this is an important point. We've done programs on this and we've condemned, we've other scholars who've condemned this but it seems like people keep throwing this back and they keep revisiting this and they keep throwing, those are the guys, 9-11, Islam and Muslims and now creating the sensationalism. What do we have to say about this if they come up to you and they throw this in your face? How do we respond? Well, you know, we have to look at events in the world um, for what is happening on the ground. I, I've been living in South Africa yeah. for the past 10 years, and, and the former president, Nelson Mandela, at one point he was called a terrorist yeah. because he was terrorizing the apartheid government. And, um, but once people realized what was happening, uh, and, and he was able to have the patience you know, and the resistance you know, to, to, to come out of the prison, you know, and then take over the country, he moved from being a terrorist to a world leader to a Nobel Peace Prize winner. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so these names are thrown, you know, back and forth, and, you know, there's a lot of things going on in the world. But the reality is that we need to look at affairs from all points of view. You cannot judge an issue from one side. That's the reason why I, I study the roots of history, you know, not as we called it. We used to say history was his story. Yeah. So we look at it from not his story, but our story, the story of humanity. So if a person really wants to know about Islam then, you know, and Muslims, they should go to Muslims you know, and, and, and read about Islam. Yeah. Instead of just reading you know, another source in the newspapers, they should go you know, take it from the horse's mouth, as yeah. we say. Go right to the source. So Islam has nothing to do with killing innocent women, children, nothing whatsoever? Exactly. It's very clear in the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that even when he sent his soldiers out in defense of the nation, he told them, do not kill innocents, do not kill non-combatants. He, he even said, do not destroy churches and synagogues, do not kill monks and, and rabbis, you know, do not destroy infrastructure, meaning don't poison the water, don't destroy trees, keep everything intact, because we are not there to destroy. We're only defending ourselves. We're only establishing justice. And if, and if the enemy asks for peace, give it to them immediately. That is what is, because Islam is based on peace. So it, it's a total distortion 
uh, about what Muslims are. We don't say, Assalamu Alaikum means peace be upon you. It doesn't mean bomb be upon you. <laughs> it's peace be upon you. Peace be upon you. And this is what we're saying all the time. Yeah. And people have to realize this when they're dealing with Muslims. Last closing comments and suggestions for the truth seekers, those now, because there were also those who were vengeant against Islam, vilifying Islam, even at the time of the last and fundamental Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, but somehow they ended up coming to Islam. So even those people and the sincere people, talk to them all, give them some good advice to soften mm -hmm. their heart, and maybe God willing even to have them come to the truth, live on the truth, and die in the truth. Well, they, they need to remember that the times we are living in now, it's turbulent times. And with the change going on in the environment, the world that we know will never be the same. The floods that are hitting the world, the earthquakes, the famines, diseases, they are now being described as the worst calamities in living memory. The oil spill you know, on the east coast of the United States, and we all need to pray, you know, for some solution to this. This will be the worst disaster in our memory. And this is the age that we are going into now. So we need to drop these, you know, false, uh, you know, superficial titles and names and come together as a human family and try to find ways that we connect with each other as opposed to finding divisions uh, between each other. Come together as a human family, deal with the environment, deal with nature. The animals are crying out. The, bir the, the birds are dying. The fish are dying. Insects are, are being destroyed. This world, we're all interconnected. This is what they call biodiversity. We're, we're part of a grand plan. And we need to take our role you know, as the representatives of God on this earth and come together as a human family. And you will see, when you really touch Muslims, you will find that Muslims have a great role to play in this world uh, and in the future of this planet. Thank you. Thank you, Shay, for being with us. May God Almighty, the creator of the heavens and earth, Allah reward you. Inshallah. Thank you. And let us come to a common terms between us and you, that we worship none but the one God, the creator of all that exists, the creator of Moses, Abraham, Jesus, the creator of the sun and the moon, the creator of everything that is in existence, that one God. And that's something that's in your very nature. You just got to let it out. Don't suppress it. And you see, and you've heard it here on the Dean Show, we're a people of peace. First we have peace with the owner of peace, the creator of the heavens and earth. He gives us peace, and then we wish you peace. Assalamu alaikum. And we'll see you next time here on the Dean Show. Until then, again, peace be unto you.